I'm Hi. so excited <laughs> to see you. Thank you for coming on the show. Okay, so here's the thing. My mom says to me, hi, mom. Hi, mom. So, so random last night. She gets angry when I'm doing press and I don't tell her. And I said, I'm doing you. And she says, you're, you're doing her? And I go, yeah. And so she says, I watched. She knew what time you came on in Philadelphia. And I was like, how random, mom? That's such a random, a white girl. What a random freaking, she's so, it's like so, and so she loves you. So, oh, mom, yes. I'm on her show. Hi, so what's say your hi mom's to Clara, name? Drew. Clara. Say, Clara, say hi. Hi, Clara, how are you? I'm so glad that you watched the show. That means everything. Let me tell you, you don't understand. This is going to make her life. <laughs> I'm so glad she's watching, and, and she's in Pennsylvania or Philly. Is that what you said? Philadelphia, yeah. I'm so thrilled, and I'm so excited to be talking to your son. You know, mm. when I look at your body of work and the careers, you know, I mean, think about it. The Academy Awards, you produce Monsters Ball, that's Halle Berry. Precious, you know, got Gabby Sidibe a nomination. Monique, who was in Precious, won the gold. And now, you know, Andrew Day is nominated for Billie Holiday. And I even read stories like Taraji P. Henson wanted to work with you. You kept that in your mind and then you brought it back around when you were launching Empire. And the amount of careers that you have supported is extraordinary. Thanks, Drew. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, you're just trying to tell a story and in, in telling the story, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to keep uh, people of color and women and LGBTQ people employed. Um, and that's just so subconscious of me. And in that you just sort of, you, you bring your life to, and your life experience and what you want to uh, the screen, in front of the screen and in back of the screen. So thank you for acknowledging that. Billie Holiday is someone that we all know and loved and Andrew Day came on the show. We had a very profound conversation. She won the Golden Globe a few days later. Um, congratulations on that. And her Academy Award nomination was soon um, announced thereafter. And my daughter was actually born to God Bless the Child by Billie Holiday. Um, no. Yes, it was a, quite the auspicious uh, moment, by the way. And uh, I have listened to Billie Holiday my entire life. I listened to her all weekend long, everything I've ever done. It, she is the soundtrack oh, wow. of my life. And what I asked Andra is now having seen your film, how I should listen to her now, knowing the information that you brought to light. You know, you loved the Lady Sings the Blues film with Diana Ross. Why was this something that having loved her, loved her story, had to see it through and tell a different narrative about Billie Holiday? I loved Lady Sings the Blues, you know? Yeah. It really changed my life, Drew. It I was 13 and I was, um, in Philadelphia, and it was the first time I'd seen two people that looked like me kissing uh, uh, Billy Dee Williams and Diana Ross, and she was so stunning, and Richard Pryor was so funny, and the fashions were so fabulous, and the music was so incredible, and I could smell the fried chicken popping off the screen. I felt like I was in my home. And I walked out of the theater thinking, I wanna make people feel like that. And, uh, and I think that that was the reason, I know that that was the reason that got me into, um, and also the, the idea of drugs. Even though I had not experienced drugs at that time, and this is the first time I'm talking about this, even then I realized that uh, I was going to have my dance with that, with that beast. But that was many years later. And, um, but anyway, many years later, I, I read the script that Susan Laurie Parks wrote, brilliant playwright. Uh, and I understood that that wasn't the story, though it was a, it was a romanticized version of what um, Billie Holiday's life was. And then I listened to Strange Fruit and I, I listened to it with different ears. It affected me. It was ugly. It was, I, I cried. I understood it. And um, I said, I have to tell this woman's story. This woman's story has been buried. The government has succeeded in brainwashing me, my parents, my family, everyone, that she was just a drug addict. And um, I, I associated my father and, 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 and the relationship, the very bad relationship that I have with my dad, with her relationship, with her mom. And, uh, you know, when I work, it's therapeutic, it's healing for me. So though 
I wanted to explore the civil rights of it all. I also was trying to find me, and um, and I found me in Billie Holiday. I, I, you know, I was able to do the film sober, which was a first for me. I so relate to what you are saying as far as my personal experience was that somehow films and filmmaking and the families and the community I built through them kept me straight. No matter what I was going through in my personal life or with things, I did think sometimes there was artistry in my hedonism. And I suppose that so many people feel that way, that they cannot give it up, it, that as accountable as work will make you, and as much as that's your therapy and your way into the world, you still have a personal struggle on the side. And why do you think that you, myself, artists, struggle with addiction in that way, or hedonism, or fueling that creative fire, as if if that gets extinguished, we are dark and everything is lost? All you the, know what's interesting? Why? Here's the thing. It is, it is, it is, we have, um, people are cruel. And I don't think that they understand that this really is a, it's a disease. And um, for artists, we have an escape. You yeah. know, I feel blessed that I have an escape. You know, when uh, I was put in a trash can at a young age for um, walking down the stairs in my mother's high heels, I escaped and I pretended that I was a, uh, Aladdin on a magic carpet. And um, and that's how I've dealt with all of my pain. Uh, I, I dealt with all of my pain over the years, escape through drugs, uh, not wanting to feel, yeah. you know? And um, it's just about learning how to feel right now, how to feel and how to be present and uh, and how to share my story with other people so that I can, so that I can help other people. You have a ghetto film school, which I can't think of a better person to shepherd everybody because you are the example of what is possible in storytelling, filmmaking, producing, directing.